Hey everyone, it's Nick with Us vs. Herd. If it's your first time here, you like the content, hit subscribe. If you want to get notifications from when we go live or post these watch list videos, tap the bell. And if you want to join the UVH fam, our community, links are below to their Discord and our free options trading group on Facebook. Definitely, definitely trying something different here. What I'm trying to do is put out these watch list videos. If they're of value to you, leave me a comment below. Let me know. I did, I did my, well, I did my first one last night, and I did, I did get a comment from somebody saying that we saved him 2500 bucks from from trading Nasdaq futures, and that he thought it was really great value. So, if you want me to continue making these videos, let me know. This is kind of a a trial and error, just trying to trying something new, trying something fresh with the UBH fam, you guys, and just the channel in general. So if you guys if you guys like this content, let, let me know. If you don't like it, let me know as well. Um, I definitely want to make ca uh, content that caters to you as an individual and as a trader. Um, get into it. We're going to talk about the watch list. We're going to be talking about Trump. We're going to be talking about China. We're going to be talking about what I'm going to be looking forward to tomorrow. As today was a relatively flat day slash consolidation day. I mean, we did have the gap up, but that was pretty much it um one thing one stock that i'm gonna be looking at is j and j um i don't know if you guys heard the news but johnson and johnson was uh was ordered to pay um 575 was it yeah 572 million in fines about regarding the opioid crisis and the stock price is currently moving to the upside and you're like why would that why would that move that i mean right now j and j is going to appeal the decision you know, J and J stock is up more than five percent post market trading after the verdict was read, and mostly because you're know, like, why would it be up? Why would it be up if if they're going to have to pay money? First of all, it's not not really a lot that much money for Johnson and Johnson. Second of all, most investors investors want that news behind them. So it's currently you know now that they have that that they don't they don't have that news dangling or what what it could be what it couldn't be you know uncertainty brings brings more pain to stock and people don't want to invest in it but now that it's gone you know the other thing that i think that's interesting here you know it's kind of consolidating around the 130 mark uh, what makes it interesting for me uh, on this trade in particular is is right here where we have the um you know it's at 127.80 you know we, it fell apart on friday of course what, I mean, pretty much everything, but it's back down in this like consolidation area, which it could make another run back up to like 132. We're at 130 right now, could push up to like the 132 area. And premium is actually not that expensive. But the one thing that you have to be concerned about here is the volume. Like these only have 200 volume, and the, the bid and the ask is like 45 cents. You know, you want to trade. You want to trade more liquid volume. Then you can see like on the on the 135s, the volume was 2700. At the at the 130s, there were 2300. Kind of in between, you know, like a bid of 15 cents and an ask of 75 cents. So you just got to be very careful with it. Understand what you're trading and don't try to trade too wide of a bid and ask. Like if you're trading the 8 cent bid and the ask here or 15 cents, pretty good. Um, 30 cents is not too bad. But just just be aware that some of these some of these strikes are not that liquid. You can get you can definitely get stuck overpaying or not being able to exit like on some of these puts here. I mean, just 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 kind of crazy so uh j and j i definitely think there's opportunity there to the upside because we're back down this consolidation move um i'm not sure how quickly it will move up there but that's just one of the things um that i am looking at also i am looking at spy um one of the I, I i've been looking at it today i traded it pretty successfully um i did talk about it last night about this um triple bottom down in here where it was potentially you know, we were going to have a bounce and today we did have a bounce and it had nothing to do with I mean, mostly fundamentals. And, you know, that kind of goes into the Trump thing, which you got to you got to be you got to be careful with with the trade news. And as the, the reason why the futures bounce is because uh, or the stock market bounce in general today is because Trump said that we were going we were, you know, China wanted to negotiate. Um, the question is, we're not sure which side is telling the truth. I mean, obviously, you want to side with the US, but Trump's track record is not necessarily, I would say 100% in China, we, we have no idea what goes on over there. So, um, you know, one of the things he said this morning is China, he said, China called last night our top trade people and said let's get back to the table so we will getting back so we will be getting back to the table and I think they want to do something they have been hurt very badly 
but they understand this is the right thing to do and I have great respect for it. This is a very positive development for the world. So he took the weekend to kind of reflect on his actions. You know, he was all gung-ho on Friday, raising tariffs, just going completely crazy. And now he's saying, hey, China called up and says we're ready to get back to the table. And he says, I think we're going to have a deal. I don't know how many times this is going to happen. I don't know how many times the market is going to react to this. Algos, the algorithms are apparently configured to buy on this news. And it works every single time. The market goes up as soon as he says. But they're, they're, he's hoping, you know, there's hopes that there's going to be a trade deal. They've been saying this for over a year now. It's just been crazy. But what's interesting here, it says in Beijing, foreign ministry spokesman Geng Shuang said he was not aware that a phone call between the two sides had taken place. So I'm not sure, you know, this could this could totally be debunked. Maybe there was a phone call and he wasn't in the he wasn't in the know. Not sure. Um, I'm not sure, sure how you say this guy, but he's an editor in chief of Chinese state run newspaper, The Global Times, denied that negotiators had held the phone calls had Trump described. You know, China didn't change its position. China won't cave to U.S. pressure. So, I mean, the rhetoric is, is pretty pretty strong here, and they're they're basically saying what they've always been saying is we're not going to cater to pressure, and you know I I don't know, I honestly nobody knows. So um, that's why I did leave on my I have a 285 SPY put because I do think that we could come back down into the 285 284 area. I do have it for Wednesday expiration, so that's the only trade that I currently have on right now. Um, also what I'm looking at here, uh, Lyft got upgraded today. You know, they said they could be, um, profitable by 2020. Um, not sure if that's true, but it's trading at the bottom of the range. Again, we're trading at the bottom of a range. So I definitely would am interested in this to like 55. You know, this is a typical, this is a very typical setup that I would be trading here. So, um, trading it for 50 to 55 definitely would be nice. I mean, no one's going along with, with this in mind and we'll see, we'll see what tomorrow we open up at but i'd be looking at to kind of revisit this 55 area if it does pick up some traction and people want to invest in lift i mean i don't personally see it but you know you gotta trade the trends you got you kind of gotta kind of go with the flow with with those stocks um since they're kind of unknown uh bynd another stock that i'm looking at they just uh inked a deal with kfc one of the first young brands um you know it looks like around like 145 area, try to bottom out, it's trying to make a push up to 160 again. So you just gotta make sure with the premiums, you're getting good pricing here. I mean, these were up 200%, so these were definitely undervalued for for the bounce today. So you just gotta, you just gotta be very cautious about this because you can easily, easily get your face ripped off and beyond. Um, made some money in the past, but also lost some money in the past. So you just gotta, you just gotta be careful with it. But, um, you know, today's range went from 155 down to 150. And then I guess if you, if you bought the dip, even though this was pretty scary, um, you would have been, you would have been pretty, pretty well off on BYND. Um, so that's another, that's another trade that I'm looking forward to, to like a Tuesday, Wednesday trade, let the premiums come down a little bit and see, see if we can get some movement back up to, up to 160. If we can, you know, could easily, break out to like the 170 area is is what i'm looking at so it's hard to say like with with bynd it's hard to say you know profitability i mean their earnings weren't that great and it's been on a, a pretty much a downtrend since their earnings um so i guess we'll we'll see what happens with them but right now i'm just trading trading the trend and and going with the flow on bynd um <clears throat> and then last but not least our good friends Alibaba. Um, the one thing I will say about Alibaba is, I mean, they're getting hurt in this China trade um, um, talks, you know, obviously, but they had really good earnings. You know, they went they went way up on earnings. They were, they were like 160 up to like 170, you know, pretty nice. And then it was having some, it was having some real good movement we're up to like the 180 area and then we had the trade issues happen and now we're back down to 165. i was hoping that we kind of come back down to like the 155 area so right now i'm not exactly sure since it's kind of middle of the range here not exactly sure which way it wants to take place and today uh which way it wants to go and today i mean look i mean i mean obviously it, it gapped up but really did nothing it was it was pretty it was pretty weak towards lunchtime and then into close um, unlike other stocks that kind of ramped up in the close. I mean, like NVIDIA went from 164.50 up to 165.50. And then we had Tesla go from, 
you know, 213 50 up to 215. But Baba didn't show any strength. And interesting thing was the other day, Baba um, on strong days wasn't showing any strength on these days back up in here. It just kind of capped out at like the 180 mark. And, you know, it's a great stock to trade. Premiums are not that expensive on it. Um, let's see what they were going for today. So, but, but they, yeah, they, they took premium out of here pretty good because, I mean, it was just pretty much flat all day today. I mean, calls lost some money down here and, and obviously puts lost some money, but it was only up a dollar thirty, so relatively flat. But if anything is, they sucked premium right out today, which I guess is good for us traders because it makes things a little bit cheaper for us, allows us to online positions, and we have more opportunities to make money. And I think with those stocks, they're, they're lined up to, to, to make some movement and, and allow us to ha enter some trades so i think uh, from priorities tomorrow i'm gonna be looking at jnj &J and spy and then um the other ones will kind of come secondary so you know if this video was of value to you i definitely would appreciate you hitting the like button it definitely helps me out helps my videos out um, we'll see what happens tomorrow you know stay safe stay green it's always us versus herd